Ten Commandments of Jesus Christ, Part 7. John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Commandments of Jesus Christ. If you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you have my commandments and keep them, you love me. Chapter 15, verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. We should know his commandments. We must love his commandments. We must keep his commandments. We must abide his commandments. Jesus told his disciples, his apostles, Go to all nations. Make, make them my disciples. Baptize them. And teach them whatever I command you. Teach them whatever I command you. His commandments. There were many commandments Jesus had given to his disciples, to the people who came to them. And many of his commandments, almost all of the commandments, what Jesus gave to his disciples and to, the, and to the people, those who came to him, they are applicable to us. And out of that we are meditating on ten commandments of Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament God gave about, the Bible scholars say, 613 commandments. And in concise, it was given as Ten Commandments. And those Ten Commandments were made into two primary commandments. Love God, love your neighbor. It's in the Old Testament. Now Jesus says, my commandments. So we should meditate on Jesus' commandments. And I've never heard anybody exclusively ever preach on Jesus' commandments. The Lord burdened me because Jesus said, whatever I command you, teach them. Whatever I command you, whatever that may be, whatever I command you, teach them. So I've just taken ten commandments of Jesus Christ. It's only just a token. In those ten commandments, we have studied meditating on the allied commandments. So six commandments. And many other commandments connected with those six commandments we have meditated in the last six weeks. Number one, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Who commanded this? Who commanded this? Jesus. If you love Jesus, you will keep his commandment. If you keep his commandment, you love Jesus. It's not the church said, it's not the pastor said, we believe it's what Jesus said. Receive the Holy Ghost. And the apostles gave an explanation of what is receiving the Holy Spirit. Repent, believe, be baptized, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. It's not knowing Jesus Christ is receiving the Holy Spirit. It's not following Jesus Christ as receiving the Holy Spirit. It is not performing miracles receiving the Holy Spirit. One day Peter accepted Jesus Christ. He started following Jesus Christ. He became one of the apostles of Jesus Christ. He was sent on ministry to different villages and he was preaching the gospel in different villages. He was healing the sick, but he had not then received the Holy Spirit. He had not then received the Holy Spirit. He did everything without receiving the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, 
on the day of Pentecost. Probably it is not recorded. When did he meet Jesus? Probably it is not recorded. Uh, when did he decide to follow Jesus? Probably it is not recorded. What is the date or when did uh, Peter was ordained as an apostle? But it is recorded on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem, in the upper room, Peter received the Holy Spirit. Similarly, Paul met Jesus on the way to Damascus. But in the house of Simon the Tanner in uh, Damascus, Paul received the Holy Spirit. Paul received the Holy Spirit. So knowing Jesus, loving Jesus is a different thing. Receiving the Holy Spirit is a different thing. If you love Jesus, you will keep his commandments. And if you keep his commandments, you love Jesus. So we meditated, receive the Holy Spirit. And number two, when you receive the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, follow me. It's another commandment. Follow me. Even a few days back, I was talking with one Hindu scholar, a good thinker, a writer. When I was talking with him, I asked him, Sir, apart from religion, can you just tell me one hero, a political leader, or a leader in mythology, or a god of any other religion, that we can follow, that we can follow, and I very boldly asked him about the gods he worshipped. Can you follow those gods? The literal word Jesus used, imitate. Imitate. So I told him, for me Christianity is not a religion. For me Christianity is not a religion. For me Christianity he is trying to, it's imitating Jesus Christ. The word Jesus said, follow me, the Greek word, philosophically it means walking with in the same way. Walking with in the same way. Walking with someone in the same way. It is imitating Jesus Christ in every situation, how Jesus would have done, uh, acted in that situation. So, Christianity is nothing but imitating Jesus Christ. Again, I tell you, it's not a religion set of rules and regulations. It's more than that. It is imitating Jesus. He has set his footprints for us to follow him. And the third one, when you imitate Jesus Christ, Jesus said, seek ye the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Kingdom of God, it's a kingdom. It has got its own constitution, it's got its own uh, principles, rules and regulations. It's a gospel of the kingdom, it's a kingdom. That's what our Mahatma Gandhi wanted, Ram Raj, God's kingdom. It's a God's Raj. It's not a Rajaham. It is God's kingdom on the earth. So what's God's kingdom on the earth? We saw it's not uh, eating and drinking. Eating and drinking is not talking about uh, food. Eating and drinking is not set of uh, rites and rituals. It's not a set of rites and rituals. It's not some uh, religion. The kingdom of God is not a set of religion. And I want you to have that deep in your heart. Christianity is a kingdom. And what's that kingdom principle? It is righteousness, peace, and the joy of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Ghost must go for those three categories. Not only joy of the Holy Ghost, it is righteousness of the Holy Ghost, righteousness that, come, uh, that comes to us because of the work of the Holy Ghost in us. Peace of the Holy Ghost. Peace that's given to us by the Holy Ghost and the joy of the Holy Ghost. So that is this kingdom principle. Seek that kingdom. Seek that kingdom. 
righteousness. What is righteousness? A life living in the right standard of God. What is the law? God expected standard. That's righteousness. Right with God. Right standing with God. And peace. A life that is born out of faith. Because we trust in God. Because we know God is there. Because we know God will take care of peace. And joy of the Holy Ghost. Cheerful. Delightful. The French word is jolly. I don't know how that should be pronounced. But it's joy comes from the word jolly. That's a joy of cheerful, delightful. My dear brother, my dear sister. So let's seek you the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And number four, Jesus said, be perfect. So receive the Holy Spirit, imitate Jesus Christ, seek ye the kingdom of God and be perfect. Perfection doesn't mean completion. Completion is different. Perfection is different. And again I tell you, that word perfection means there is more to grow. You may you may surprise to understand that. Perfection, you have perfect, you have done it with nothing more wanting in that level. You are perfect. Somebody has passed the uh, first semester with no ideas. Perfect. In every subject, 100 out of 100. Perfect. He has done perfectly well. It doesn't mean he completed his studies. Some people might have completed their studies, but there is still something more that they have to do. Is not perfect. A little, I love to remind you uh, the example from cooking again. You want to make biryani. You marinated the meat perfectly well. It doesn't mean the biryani is complete. That doesn't mean that biryani is complete. You put all the ingredients perfectly right. All the ingredients. That's not the biryani is completed. And your choice of the rice, perfectly good. The best rice. There's nothing more wanting. There is nothing more wanting. Yet the biryani is not completed. In that area, what you have to do, you have, to, you have done it perfectly all right. Perfectly all right. The timing, perfect. The aroma, perfect. You have done everything perfectly all right and you have completed that biryani. You can complete that work Without perfect, without being perfect at any level. Somehow you can cook. Somehow you can marinate. The timing was not perfect. Either early or it is too late. But your biryani is completed. The Christian walk, whatever the Lord has revealed to you, be perfect in that, obeying that. Be perfect. In every area, what the Father wants you to do, do that perfectly. All right. Don't be found wanting. Okay, this one thing you haven't done. This one thing you haven't done. Now, whatever the Lord wants you to do, you do it. Whatever His commandments, obey His commandments. You are Perfect. And number five, the sacrament, the Lord's Supper. The Lord said, this do in remembrance of me. 
And when the apostle explains that, he says you should not do that unworthily. You should not do that unworthily. Many times we have misunderstood that. It is not participating in it as an unworthy person. That unworthy, unworthily, it doesn't qualify the person, it qualifies the action. As I told you the other day, a little bit of grammar, that unworthy doesn't speak about, it's not an adjective, it is an adverb. It's not a question whether you are a worthy person or an unworthy person. Nobody can, none of us can say, I am worthy. None of us can say, I am worthy. My dear brother, my dear sister, you just go and give a confession, confession to a priest. Then say, oh, I have given all the confessions now, I am worthy enough to participate. A particular uh, believer, member of the church, he was going to the priest, giving the same confession uh, every week, week after week after week. The priest noticed for three weeks, he's giving the same sin and the same uh, penance or whatever it may be. The father was also saying. And the father said, why this fellow is doing the same sin every week and coming and giving the same confession every week? So the father asked him, say, what's the, what's the problem with you? Why are you giving the same confession? So he said, only for that you are saying three times Hail Mary, otherwise you'll say ten times Hail Mary. Only for this sin you are giving three times Hail Mary, that's why I'm giving this confession. So it is not that we become worthy by doing something I become perfectly all right, nobody can say that. How do we participate in it? How do we participate in it? We participate worthily. We participate worthily. And I gave you a few hints, that is when you uh, participate in the Lord's Supper, prove that you are a believer, participate regularly, Participate reverentially, introspect yourself and participate. When you participate, enjoy the total peace with God. Last week, the sixth point we meditated. Preach the gospel. Make all disciples. Baptize them. Teach them whatever I have commanded you. So teaching others to do whatever Jesus Christ has commanded them is not only work of the apostles. Every believer must go to the unreached. Make them, enroll them as students of this kingdom, this kingdom principles, righteousness of God, peace of God, joy of the Holy Spirit, teach them. Make them disciples, baptize them, and teach them whatever Jesus Christ has commanded. Teach them whatever Jesus Christ has commanded. It is laid on every Christian. Glory be to the Lord's holy name. Another important commandment of Jesus Christ we are going to see. Another important commandment of Jesus Christ. Beware. Beware. And sometime back I remember three continuous weeks I spoke only on the subject beware. It's the commandment of Jesus, beware, be careful, take heed, beware. So I don't think that I have to again speak, because three weeks I spoke on that many times, a few uh, months back. So I don't want to speak all those 12 points 
what is spoken uh, what are the thing jesus said beware but i love to read a passage to you to remind you mark chapter 13 the whole chapter 1 to 37 we don't have time to read all the verses mark chapter 13 i just read a couple of verses to you and as he went out of the temple one of his disciples said unto him master see what manner of stones of uh, and what buildings are here and jesus answered and said unto him see as thou these great buildings there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and as he sat upon the mountain of olives over against the temple peter and james and john and andrew asked him privately tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled and jesus answering them began to say take heed lest any man deceive you in that passage itself for a five time jesus says take heed beware so in our christian walk we have to be very careful we have to take heed we have to be aware of many things and if you read the new testament if you read the new testament carefully in the new testament 50 times you see that word take heed or beware 50 times out of 50 times 25 times is in the synoptic gospel matthew mark luke it is jesus who has said take heed beware be careful in the whole bible it comes 99 times in the whole bible it comes 99 times and in 63 books it's only 674 times but in these three books it is 25 times 25 times jesus said be careful be careful beware be careful i i was when i was meditating on this two things came to my mind very strongly very strikingly two things came to my mind one is it is his knowledge he knew very well if you do this what will happen if you don't do this what will happen it is his knowledge he knew it very well so he says be careful is not moses is not isaiah jeremiah david is not john the baptist not even peter paul and john is only in jesus teachings in jesus teachings again and again be careful be aware take heed so number one it was his perfect knowledge he knew what would happen if you don't do this what will happen if you do this what will happen number two it's not only his knowledge his love for us it is love for us because he loves us so much the mother will be going on telling her be careful be careful don't go there don't stand there don't talk with that person don't do it do this and that may irritate the children children may get irritated but the mother repeatedly uses that more than anybody else mother then the father friend may not say be careful be careful be careful 
A neighbor may not say, be careful, be careful, be careful. You will hear that word, be careful, be careful, be careful. You will hear that word mostly from your mother. So knowledge is one thing and love is another thing. So Jesus gives this commandment, be careful, beware. Is because he has got the perfect. If you don't do this, this will happen. This is going to be an end. This is going to be the end. The consequence. Be careful. Number two, it is because of his love. It is because of his love. Those twelve things, what I preached earlier, just I read out those points. Number one, don't have a religion just for others to be seen. It's very dangerous. Prayer, fasting, uh, doing charity. Don't have a religion for others to be seen. Number two, don't be covetous. Number three, let not, your, let not the light in you become dark. Whatever the light you have got, don't allow that light to become dark. Light about salvation, light about truth, light about eternity. Don't allow that light to become dark. Number four, beware of false prophets. Number five, beware of false doctrines. Number six, beware of men. Number seven, beware that you should not be deceived. Number eight, uh, beware not that your heart is not overcharged with worries and things of the world. And number eight, beware not to, uh, not to despise any humble man of God. Beware not to despise a humble man of God. Number ten, beware of the end. Number eleven, beware not to be troubled. Number twelve, beware of yourself. A set of three messages on the caption, beware. Where I have spoken these twelve points, Jesus said that we have to be we have to beware of certain things. That set CD is available only a few copies. At the close of the service, those who want to listen to that message, what are the things that we should beware of? You can collect this message. The commandment, beware. And this will give an explanation, an exposition. Of that command, beware. My dear brother, my dear sister. So when we say beware, beware of men. Beware that you are light. Uh, beware that your light doesn't become dark. Your light is not darkened. Beware. Beware. How can I be careful that my light is not darkened? Beware of false prophets. How can I be careful? How can I beware of false prophets? How can I beware of false prophet? Jesus said, Beware of just a demonstrative or deceptive religion, praying that others should be seen, uh, doing some charity for others to be seen, Fasting for others to be seen. So beware of that. How to be careful? How should I be careful? About the end time. A few days back, a senior pastor, he met me and he was discussing about the end time with me. How can I beware of these things? How can I beware of these things? Please listen carefully. Number one, just I'm going to tell you five things. How you could be beware of these things. Just five things. Number one, whatever the commandment may be, your mother has said, here Jesus has said, whatever the commandment may be, take it to mind. Take it to mind. 
It's the first thing. Take it seriously. When Jesus says, don't pray just for others to be seen. Take it seriously. Take it to mind. Ah, yeah, I know. Your daddy says, son, don't do it. Take it seriously. Especially when the Bible, whatever the commandments may be, he said, follow me. Take it seriously. Jesus said, believe and be baptized. Take it seriously. Uh, Jesus said, uh, seek ye the kingdom of God and its righteousness first. Take it seriously. I tell you, don't play religion. Don't play Christian. The teachings of Jesus Christ especially, the apostolic doctrines, the teachings in the Bible, oh, so what? Oh, no, it's not possible. No, it may have a different meaning. Don't do like this. If you want to be careful, beware. Beware. To beware, the most important thing Take that teaching, that instruction carefully. That is taking that to the mind. He has said you have to maintain this like this. There's an instruction manual. I know. I know. That attitude is very, very bad. So number one, I love to tell you, take it to mind. Glory be to the Lord's holy name. I heard the London uh, metro train station, when the train stops, I heard an automatic announcement will come, mind the gap. Mind the gap. The gap between the train and the platform problem. Mind the gap. So they take that seriously. Take it to the mind. Mind is very, very important. Take it to the mind. Number two is not just taking it to the mind. Number two Give thought to it. Give thought to it. Be analytical. Whatever you may say, I believe what I believe only. I believe what I believe only. Now Jesus says, be careful about false doctrines. Be careful about false doctrines, false teachings. Then somebody says, this is a false teaching. You need not believe because somebody says, this is a false teaching. Or because you already believe something, you say, whatever others may say, I will not change. When you take it to mind, be analytical, give a serious thought to it. This is what I have been believing. This is what so and says, says it's in the Bible. Now let me see. God has given us intelligence. God has given us uh, uh, an ability to think, to analyze. You think about so many things. In so many things you read between lines. The Bible principle. Try to see in proper perception. Okay. This is what I have been believing. Now somebody says this is the truth. Now let me see what is in between, what the Bible says. What the Bible says. I remember a simple story. One day all of a sudden, a man started saying, I am dead, I am dead, I am dead. He came home and told his wife, your husband is dead, your husband is dead. He thought he was joking. 
He said, no, you are not dead, you are alive. No, no, I am dead, I am dead. Children came from the school. He started telling the children, your daddy is dead, your daddy is dead. Two days, three days, he started telling everybody, I am dead, I am dead, I am dead. Then they thought it was a serious problem. So they took him to different physicians. They took him to psychologists. So everybody tested, they could not understand what his problem was. Finally, one conclusion they came. He, he has gone into a very strong faith. It has become very strong that he started believing he was dead. He started believing he was dead. Now he has to convince that he is not dead. So a battery of doctors sat around and they took a strategy. Make him understand. Only a man with life his blood will be flowing, bleeding. Only a man with life will be bleeding, otherwise the blood will be frozen. So they had all the charts, gadgets, some video presentation, everything. And they are showing to him, only a man with life will have bleeding. Otherwise the blood will be frozen if he is dead. Finally, that person believed. Okay, only if we are alive, the blood will be bleeding. If we are dead, the blood will be frozen. He finally understood. When he understood that, a doctor, he had a needle hidden. He just took the needle and poked his hand. Blood started bleeding. Blood started bleeding. See, 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 your blood is bleeding. So it's bleeding, it's bleeding. All the doctors shouted. With great surprise, he saw the blood. And he said, what a surprise. Even the blood of a dead man is bleeding. What a surprise. Even the blood of the dead man is bleeding. When you are convinced, what are all the teachings? What all the efforts we take? And finally say, yes, I know. Even the blood of a dead man will be bleeding. So, if you want to be careful, you must say no to that I know that I, I know attitude. Analyze what is right, what is wrong, the person who says this, is he more knowledgeable than I am? Or should I continue in my blind faith, my childhood faith? Or should I try this? I might have misunderstood earlier. Now I must have a right understanding. I must have a right understanding. I started studying, praying, asking God, lead me in the right path, O oh Lord. Lead me in the right path. Many are coming to the truth because we are giving a thought to what we understand. That we are unable to come out from the beaten path. We are trying to find out what is the true path. What does the Bible say about certain things? We make a choice. There's a religion. All through the history, when Jesus Christ came, many things what he was saying, there are that day's people, the people belonging to that religion. That's also God-given religion misunderstood. When they said, don't commit adultery, they had a wrong understanding. It's the same Torah, it's the same Old Testament. They had a wrong understanding. When Jesus was trying to show them, what does it actually mean, don't commit adultery, don't kill? What does it actually mean? People in these days, they are not willing to accept it. Even today, Jews are not willing to accept it. 
because it's different from what they have been thinking all these years. What those rabbis have taught them. Their simple question, does this fellow know more than my rabbi? Does this fellow know more than my rabbi? If the same question continues. One of my sisters, after listening to everything what I say, she'll say, Will this fellow know more than our bishops? Will this fellow know more than our priests? With all love and affection, they will be listening to it. Then they come to a conclusion. Will this village preacher know more than our rabbis? They could not accept the truth. But those who are willing to come out of that established religion, started following Jesus Christ. They, they had a lot of persecution. They had a lot of persecution. If Jesus Christ has done only miracles, there would not have been any persecution. Will anybody crucify him for performing miracles? Performing miracles. Will anybody crucify him? Feeding thousands of people. Will anybody crucify him? Bringing Lazarus out. Will anybody crucify him? Had he stopped preaching truth, nobody would have persecuted him. No problem he would have had. But since he was preaching against the established religion, the established Jewish religion, their practices, their festivals, their understanding, he was not a big reformer, but he was just trying to bring out the truth. They killed him. In all these years, 2000 years, it continues. It continues. People don't want to listen to the truth. My dear brother, my dear sister, recently I was talking with one gentleman and is highly educated. I told you, sir, I'm not against the established church. I'm not against the established church. I'm still CSI. Our church is in only in South India. We are not in CNI. We are in CSI, I told you. Are we in North India? We are only in South India. I said, wherever the church, the established church, defers the Bible, I defer the church. It's a very simple phenomenon. Because I want to be careful. I want to be careful in following Jesus Christ. I want to, care, I want to be careful in teaching others the truth. What I know as the truth, I must be willing to teach others. So my dear brother, my dear sister, being careful, number one, whatever that instruction, take it to the mind. No, not your yes, 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 yes. Getting into this year and leaving it another year. Take it to your mind. When you take it to your mind, that is when you are serious. To say yes or to no, you are serious. When you take it to your mind, give a deep thought to it. Jesus said, with what measure you measure, to that measure it will be given to you. With what measure you measure, the literal meaning, to what level you meditate on it, you analyze that, you find out what is right, what is wrong. Ye has said this, from my childhood I am taught like this, now I understand this as the truth. I analyze what is right, what is wrong. Not a blind faith, not as a, my, my religion, going to church, singing some songs, prayer, saying that prayer, it's not just as a, as a proverbial, a blind man seeking for a black cat in a dark room when it is not there. A blind man seeking for a black cat in a dark room when it is not there. My dear brother, my dear sister, your religion should not be like that. You must walk in light. And you should have to be very careful that your light is not darkened. Give a serious thought to it. 
So number one, take it to your mind. When you take it to your mind, chew it. Think about it. And number three, what is how, how can you be careful? How can you be careful? Think about the consequences of trespass. Think about the consequences of trespass. He has said, do this. If I don't do, what will happen? What would be the consequence? What will be the consequence? You think about that seriously. Think about that seriously. What would be the consequence? Yesterday a pastor and his wife, they came to see me. And about their son's, son's ministry, they were talking to me. When they were talking to me, the boy is a very good boy, very committed boy, doing a good ministry, etc., etc. But they wanted him to take baptism when he passed standard 12. I asked them, the Bible, there's no connection between standard 12 and the baptism. Is there any connection between standard 12 and the baptism? Can anybody see? He's a servant of God, but I was talking to him. So he asked me, Pastor, just some age. I said, I don't see in the Bible there's an age fixed like that. Only when you pass standard 12 and you produce the certificate, then only you can be baptized. I don't see that in the Bible. Or at least you must have passed standard 12 to be baptized. Is there anywhere in the Bible? What the Bible says, we believe that Jesus is your God, be baptized. We believe that Jesus is your God, be baptized. What's the age there? And I told him, I don't want this to happen. Something happens before he completes his standard 12. Something happens before he completes his standard 12. What, who is responsible? Can you say that, no, no, we want to have the standard 12 certificate for baptism? What could be the consequence? If I do this, what will happen? If I don't do this, what will happen? It's only for baptism. Be careful means, it may be a small instruction, Suppose that the instruction says in, a, in, a, in a electric equipment, don't use this gadget when it is connected to the mains. You read that instruction. Think about the consequence. An electrocution may be possible. A short circuit may be possible. The manufacturer has said, has given an instruction, don't use this gadget when it is connected to the main. When it is connected to the main. It's an instruction given. So follow that instruction. Follow that instruction. Many people, many people will go to hell not because they are murderers, not because they are liars, not because they committed adultery. They will go to hell just because they are not careful. They didn't mind the gap. They didn't mind the gap. They didn't take that instruction seriously. I warn you in the name of Jesus. Not to scare you with that love and affection, I tell you. 
Now last yesterday it was a, a big struggle for me. What that what the Lord wants me to teach the church? Because we were three weeks I have taught the church. Twelve points I given to the church. The Lord said, Tell my people what is to be careful. So number one, take whatever the Bible instruction seriously. Don't read the Bible because just it's a morning, your routine. Let the Word of God teach you. Let the Word of God talk to you. Let the Word of God be meaningful. Read it seriously. It's an instruction manual. To understand what you should do, what you should not do. Read that manual carefully. And analyze it, certain things you don't understand. You don't go and talk to pastors. My dear brother, my dear sister, just uh, a couple of days back, a couple came to meet me, highly educated, well placed in the education system. Both are professors in university. One was a controller of examinations, university examinations. When I was talking to them, they were attending a church. They told me they had never met that pastor for ten years. They never talked with him. I said, going to a church and just listening to your preaching, Year after year, day after day, week after week. It's, it's, a, it's just, a, just a religion. Just a religion. It's a personal relationship. Asking the pastor, clarifying your doubts. What is right? What is right? You find out. No, 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 we should not ask the priest. Just we go, we worship, we believe what they say. Please, you're wrong. When Jesus was on the earth, Jesus asked questions, disciples asked questions, people asked questions, Pharisees asked questions. If at all in a system they say you should not ask questions, I say that system is false. Or that system is not Christian. The system Christian is asking questions. Jesus asks questions and people ask questions to Jesus. So you go and ask questions to your pastor. Pastor, what is right? This is what you say. This is what the Bible says. This is what the other preachers say. What is right? Find out. Otherwise the consequence, you will be missing heaven. That day you can say, I am very truthful, every Sunday I went there, I just stood for the singing, I just paid the, my offerings and all very correctly. I did my religious duties. I don't see anywhere in the Bible that you will be accepted to heaven because you are doing your religious duties. It is a very simple thing. Whatever the arguments you have got, I need out and find out the truth. Even an apostle comes, examine that apostle. Find out what the apostle says is right or wrong. Again, the word of God. You can't say, Pastor, what you are saying is wrong because in Singapore they said something different. You can't say, what you are saying is wrong because in our, our religion they said something different. You find out what is right. When you find out that is right, help me to follow that. When you find that I am right, try to follow that. Otherwise the consequences at that time nobody can help you. Nobody can help you. My dear brother, my dear sister, with all fear and trembling, mind the gap. I will remind you what that preacher said. Many people will go to hell not because they are murderers or they commit adultery or they are liars. Many people will go to hell because they are not careful. They are not careful. 
So we have to be very serious about the consequences. And number four, number four, when you understand what the truth is, or when you analyze, try to come to a conclusion. You can't be going on analyzing, 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 by the time Christ will come, even that millennium will be over. Come to a conclusion. How long that should take for a conclusion? Just instantaneously. It doesn't require years and years. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. When you are to turn to the left or to the right, your ears must hear, this is the way walk hearing. Your ears must hear, this is the way walk hearing. Jesus Christ was teaching his disciples just twelve people. At times three people, four people. He was teaching them. It's not a big crowd. The word of God must teach you. This is the way walk hearing. When you hear his voice, obey. Come to a conclusion, what is right, what is wrong. Is this right? Is this right? This is also right? This is also right? You can't be tossing in between. You want to be careful now, the time is running out. The time is running out. You have to be careful. If this is right, follow this. If this is wrong, stand against it. The children used to play a game, in the pond, on the bank. Don't stand on the periphery, either in the pond or on the bank. Follow whatever that is right. Stand against whatever that is wrong. My dear brother, my dear, it's a very simple thing. You want to be careful. You want to be careful, so you have to take a decision. Whether I should get down from the train or I should not get down from the train. Whether I should get into this train or I should not get into that train. Decide. Come to a conclusion. If this is the way, walk here in. If this is not the way for trade, because of such and such reason, this is not the way. This is the way, but I can't walk in this way. This is not the right way. This is the way, this is not the right way. You can't go on saying like this is the way. Find out. Come to a conclusion. My dear brother, my dear sister, you want to be careful. Beware. So what I am teaching today, it's more a, a lesson on psychology or life management. For that God to be blessed, for God to bless you. I love that you could get these three CDs to find out what are the areas you have to be careful. So I'm not talking today about the areas you have to be careful. What should you do to be careful? What should you do to be careful? And now finally, so first take that instruction seriously, especially Bible instructions. Take that instruction seriously. You've got a small gadget around 2,000 rupees. You have to be very serious about it. That's the instructions, a small calculator or something, but you know it very well. If something goes wrong, it's okay, you can buy one more. But you have bought a gadget, say, around 20,000 rupees. You have to be very careful. Now you bought a TV that's two lakhs. 
in installing the TV, in using the TV, you have to be extremely careful. Now this is jumping from a flight with parachute. You have to be very careful about the instruction, about the lessons. Now this is about your eternity. When you don't follow the instructions carefully, you will be in hell. At that time your father, your mother, your priest, your pastor, your friend, nobody can help you. It's not just a matter of life or death, it's a matter of eternity. So listen to it seriously. When you take it seriously, give a thought to it, analyze it with a God-given light. When you give a thought to it, be serious about the consequences. What will happen if I obey? What will happen if I don't obey? When you give a serious thought about the consequences, come to your decision. Come to your decision. Don't procrastinate. Come to your decision. When you decide, number five, Apply that in your life. Walk in that way. Keep it up. Try to follow that. In whatever you understand that. Apply that in your life situation. So these are the five things I tell you to be careful. To be careful. My dear brother, my dear sister. The Spirit of the Lord has spoken to you. You have to be careful about many areas. When you want to be careful about many areas, about uh, the false teachings, about false prophets, you have to be very careful. The light in you should not be darkened, etc., etc., etc. When you want to be careful about these things, take these five things into your consideration. Whatever the instruction given in the Bible, Take it seriously. The Bible says, repent, repent. The Bible says, believe, believe. The Bible says, be baptized, baptize. The Bible says, follow me, follow me. Follow Jesus. The Bible says, love your neighbor, love your neighbor. If the Bible says, don't lie, don't lie. Take it seriously. Wherever there is, wherever you don't understand it properly, or wherever you have got a different understanding, give a thought to it. Be analytical. Analyze what does it say. Think about the consequences. It will come to pass. It will come to pass, whether blessing or curse the reward or the punishment, it will come to pass. Whether you will be in eternity, you will be in heaven forever and ever, or one will be in hell forever and ever, it will come to pass. In Africa, there was a little native boy, he has become a Christian. One day he was sitting and reading the Bible, a white missionary came by that side of us, that African, but I think what he could understand in the Bible. He said, son, can you tell me what's the Bible passage you love the most? Can you tell me what's the Bible passage it's love, you love the most? He says, the whole Bible, I love one sentence. That one sentence, he says, is the center for the whole Bible. He started preaching to the missionary. That is the center for the whole Bible. The missionary asked him, Okay, son, tell me what is that you love the most? What is that sentence? You say that is the center for the whole Bible. The little boy said, It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. In your life, it shall come to pass. You are in heaven. Are anybody in hell? 
it shall come to pass. Nobody can help us at that time. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Neither king's men nor king's horse can put Humpty Dumpty together. The danger of sitting on the wall. It's a beautiful philosophy. Come to a conclusion and execute that conclusion in your life. My dear brother, my dear sister, if you love Jesus, you'll have his commandments. You love his commandments. You will keep his commandments and you will abide his commandments. One of his commandments, beware, be careful, be careful, be careful. My dear brother, my dear sister, be careful. The Spirit of the Lord has spoken to you about what you do, about what you follow, about your perceptions, about your understandings, about your interpretations. Be careful before that could be too late. The Spirit of the Lord has spoken to you. Surely the Lord will bless you. I'll pray for you. Dear Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, O oh Lord. Thank you for the wonderful words that you have given to your people. Help us understand your commandments. Give me the grace that you'll be able to teach whatever you have commanded us, O oh Lord. To meditate on your commandments. Thank you, Lord, today I have spoken to the church that we should be there. We have to be careful. We have to mind the gap, O oh Lord. We have to mind the gap, O oh Lord. Help us to be careful. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.